It's plain to see how good the Lord has been. But I hear some people say, put that old black book away. And then I just remind them once again. It's just a book that saved me from damnation. It's just a book that cleansed me from my sin. It's just a book that found in this great nation. And it's our only hope to get her back again. They don't want God's Ten Commandments. They don't like my King James Bible. They don't care to hear what Jesus Christ has done. They speak with such conviction and condemn us with such boldness. But just show the book and then just watch them run. Yeah, yeah. If it's just a book, why are you running? If it's just a book, why get so mad? If it's just a book. Why get so nervous? It's just a book that knows every thought you had. When you open up this book into your heart, it takes a look, and it shows you exactly what you are. From the pages there within, it points out your every sin. It discerns the thoughts and intents of your heart. It's just a book that showed me full salvation. It's just a book that read my title clear. It's just a book that gave to me the victory. It's the King James Bible that I hold so dear. It's just a book that saved me from damnation. It's just a book that cleansed me from my sin. It's just a book that found in this great nation. And it's our only hope to get her back again. And it's our only hope to get her back again.
sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall find my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Man, if you can lose your salvation, that blood must not be that powerful, and that the Lord, our Savior, isn't that powerful if you can lose your salvation. But I believe that He can save you from the uttermost the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. I think he can save you from the pits of hell to the highest heaven. Amen. I think I think he can keep you there. Amen. I don't just think it. I believe it. Amen. Because the Bible's too, too, look at it. It's too clear on it. Yeah. And these people can't hear it. They think God is going to lose your salvation. I don't know. That's just like, that's crazy to, to not have that much faith in God. Right. Yeah. Hmm? They have more faith in their football team than they do in God. And I can guarantee most of those guys that believe that are probably in some sports gambling thing at work. And they're willing to put their money where their mouth is on a sports team. Uh, but can't trust the Lord to save their soul forever and ever. Amen, preacher. All right, let's go ahead and dismiss Ronald's class. And we'll turn over to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, that's where we're at, verse 6 still. Woo! Well, I told you I was going to show you something about uh, um, following uh, Paul. Not Paul, not Paul Davis. <laughs> the Apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. When you find it, uh, chapter uh, 4, uh, 1 Corinthians, verse 6, we'll stand. We'll just read that one verse. It says, In these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to my, myself and Apollos for your sakes. Am I in 1 Corinthians, chapter 4? Yes. Where am I, right? It's, it looks like the right one. You're right. <laughs> For some reason, it didn't look right. And I don't know what my mind... I think i got a Biden going on. <laughs> That's horrible. Don't fall asleep. Sorry. And these things, brethren, I have in figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn... There it is. That you might learn... That you might learn. Amen. We're supposed to learn. I put a message, uh, I put a message out there on, online... And uh, it talks about uh, uh, listening and learning huh? and uh, just hammering it. So uh, that might be why I don't get too many people uh, commenting or, or saying, I like this message. It's because I just, I just let them know, just put it right out there, you know. Amen. They've taught our country to, to listen to lies for so long. You know where it started? The Easter Bunny. Santa Claus. When you're a kid. Yep. <laughs> Why would you teach your kids to believe a lie? Yeah. I got in trouble for telling them there's no Santa Claus. I got in trouble for telling them there's no Easter Bunny. Amen. I got in trouble for telling them there's no Tooth Fairy. Amen. Hmm? I, I, you heard about the guy who, the girl went into the bathroom and, uh, and the transgender guy followed him in, followed her in there. Well, Dad followed him in, huh? He went. He went in there and he identified as a, a woman. Well, 
the dad hit him in the face, knocked all his teeth out, and said, I identify as a tooth fairy. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Man, I told him, I said, I'd do the same thing. Some guy goes in the bathroom following my daughter. Uh, I'm just telling you. <laughs> you shouldn't be a brawler. No, you would, you, would, you would kiss the guy and hug him and everything while he's raping your daughter. Are you kidding me? The Bible says he needs to be executed. <laughs> that he's to be, his life's to be taken from him. That ain't that. that ain't, we wouldn't have those little pamphlets coming out say, you know, sex offenders. First degree, second degree, third degree. By the way, and, and it would stop. If you executed the sex offenders, the sex offending would stop. You know why we have a problem with murder? Why Chicago has one of the highest rate murder? Because no one's executed for it. Not even imprisoned. If you haven't heard, in Chicago, in Cook County, they have made it unconstitutional to ban guns now. And that's Chicago. Because Chicago has a gun ban. Now they said just last week that it's not illegal to ban guns in Chicago. So now legal homo, you know, People who are honest citizens can own a gun and protect themselves. Amen. Why did you say all that? Because we're learning. That you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. That no one of you be puffed up for one, another, one against another. Trying to stop uh, exalting one another from each other. I mean, exalting yourself. Making yourself better than someone else. You're not better than someone else. Man, when I tell, talk to people about the Bible, I don't come to them. I don't, I don't want to project that I'm better than they are. In fact, I, when I teach my soul winning, I tell them I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner just like you're a sinner. I'm for all, all of us are going to hell without Christ. I was, I'm sitting where, I used to sit where you're sitting. Lost and in sin. Naked in trespasses and sin. I said, and I trusted Jesus Christ. That's the only difference between me and you. I trusted Christ and he's washed away all my sins. Huh? But you haven't done that yet. And you're going to end up having to try to pay for your sins, and it isn't going to work, and you're going to spend eternity in hell. Huh? When Christ has already paid it for you. Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we hear. For your praise, honor, and glory in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Be seated, be seated. Amen. So here we have, he says to learn. We're supposed to learn from like Apollos. We're supposed to learn. It's interesting because he says, put it there, ye might learn in what? Us. He didn't say in Paul. In Paul. If I can get through all these verses, I'll show you where he tells them not just to follow Christ, Paul, but he's supposed to follow Christ. These people say, I don't follow Christ, I follow Paul. No. Now that's, that's crazy. Paul's not my savior. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. He's not my savior. I don't care. He may have been a great preacher. He may have been a great apostle. He was highly used of God, obviously. But the thing is, he's still not my savior. Moses isn't my savior. The Jews exalted him as if he was. But he's not my savior. There's one greater than him. Abraham's not my savior. He bowed to Melchizedek. And I believe Melchizedek is Christ in the Old Testament. Hmm? And uh, Abraham bowed to him and gave him tithe. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. So I'm just telling you, this, this is not about Paul. Paul would be the first one to say, this isn't about me. It's about my Savior. I'm not going to be sitting on the throne and being able to open the books of life. Huh? Open the book of life or, or open up the, uh, 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 sitting on the throne judging at the great white throne judgment or at the judgment seat of Christ. It's not going to be me, he's going to say. It's Christ who's going to be the one judging. He's going to open up this book right here. And he's going to let these words judge us. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. So he wants you to learn of him. Learn what he... Follow him, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that. And that is his subject. He doesn't, don't, don't, look at, we're trying to be examples, not to exalt ourselves. We're just servants. Remember what he said? I sow Apollos waters, and God gets the increase, and he goes, who am I, who are we? Ministers of God. That's it. We're nobody. Huh? And by the way, when they passed off the scene, 
other ministers had to take their place. But let me tell you something. When he passed off the scene, when Paul passed off the scene and all the disciples passed off the scene, all the apostles are gone, huh? guess what? God, the same God was still there. God didn't pass off the scene. They served the same God. So that God that they served is the key, is the importance in all that we do. It's not Paul. It's not Apollos. It's not Peter. It's not John. It's God. Amen. Hmm. I don't get. I don't know how they can't get that in their head. It's not about Paul. It's not about Mike. I'm pastor now of Lookout Mountain Baptist Church, but someone else will take my place. Eventually, either I die or God moves me. Either one. Hmm. Amen. Well, let's look over here in uh, Matthew chapter 23. We're going to look at some scripture. Amen. Matthew chapter 23. Let's see here. You know where Matthew's at? Oh, it's on the wrong side of the new te page that says New Testament. Hmm. I'm just joking about that. That's just another doctrine that people are pushing around. And uh, <laughs> first thing I say, oh, God must have made a mistake. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. says this, But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. You see that? He puts us all on the same level. There's only one that's the master. There's one that's called rabbi. Look at what he says. But be not ye called rabbi for, oh, I'm sorry, let's go to verse uh, 9. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Now, that's talking spiritually. You don't, you don't call anybody father. No priest is to be called father. No man is to be called father spiritually. They are not in the place of our father in heaven. They're not in the place of our savior Jesus Christ. They are either ministers or they're wolves. That's it. You ought to call them father wolf then. <laughs> huh? That's the thing. Look at, you don't, they're not father. This is what, when I learned this when I was an early, early Christian, I said, oh man, all those years we called them fathers. Because we were in the Greek Orthodox Church. Yep. My nephew, my cousins were, were priests and they called them father. Well, you're not father. You're dressed like my mother. Right. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. I mean, you're wearing a long dress. and You know. Amen. And you look like, like drinking buddies. <laughs> you act like my drinking buddies. You're all boozing it up. You know what they gave out for raffles at the Greek Orthodox Church? Number one, number one prize in their raffles. Huh? Jack Daniels, Black Label. No, did you just hear what I said? That was what, you would pay $2 for a ticket, try to win a $10 bottle of booze. Man, I got mad at him. I said, my, my brother kept, my brother-in-law kept winning it. My sister, who's a year older than me, her husband, kept winning it. And I said to the priest, I said, you know what? You are encouraging his sin. By giving him a bottle of booze. And look at He'll sit down and drink that whole thing in one sitting. Hmm? These guys think they're fathers. You know what? That's no different than what the Christians are saying. That it's okay for us to drink now. It's okay to do it in moderation. They are no different than the priests in the Roman Catholic Church. Because they said it's okay to drink. And they don't see anything wrong with that. I stay as far away from the Amen. priests that call themselves father as possible. Amen. I've dealt with them. I've actually talked to them. I've actually rebuked them. Amen. Hmm? Amen. They don't know what to say either. I actually prayed in front of them. We actually saw the Lord answer prayer immediately. Amen. And they didn't know what to do with it because they've never seen God answer prayer ever. Amen. Hmm? Amen. By the way, you want to know you want to know man of God? Seriously, it's not all this putting things on live stream and you know and then putting a message together to destroy another man. Right. 
That's not the man of God. Man of God, you get him on his face and let him pray and watch God work. Hmm? Watch God answer his prayers. Then you got yourself a man of God. <laughs> it says, neither be ye called masters. That means quit calling each other masters. Quit putting the nameplates on your door. Dr. So-and-so. You, you got your degree on the wall because you went to college. Some people have so many degrees on the wall, they look like a thermometer. Huh? Hey, look, and it means nothing. They got their PhD. You know what that stands for? Post hole digger. Hmm? That's not impressive. I'm not impressed with any of that stuff. Hmm? That's what I like about that Ed Durr, that truck driver. You know what he said? This guy's been the president of the Senate in New Jersey for many, 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 many years, the longest sitting president of the Senate. He's, he's powerful, and he's the second most powerful man in New Jersey. You know what he said? That don't scare me. I said, I like this guy. <laughs> that don't scare me. Huh? You, want me to be, you want me to shake my boots because this guy's been sitting there for all these years? Look what he's done to our state. Huh? Hey, man, I like the guy. He's my kind of guy. <laughs> See, I, I, tell, I tell people, I like it when people just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Don't beat around the bush. Don't slip in a little lie there. Little, little prevaricating of the truth. My dad used to say, I'm just prevaricating the truth. I said, why don't you just call it a lie? You're lying. Huh? <laughs> Amen. And here it says, need to be you call masters. For one is your master, even Christ. So quit going around exalting ourselves. Look, at I may be pastor, but there's one great, greater than I. I'm just an under-shepherd. I learned to say that a long time ago. I'm not a shepherd. I know preachers will say I'm the shepherd of the church. You're probably right. Jesus Christ is supposed to be the shepherd of the church. We're just under-shepherds. We answer to him. We go to him. We bow to him. We're at his feet. What are you talking about? Learning! Learning how to live. See, when a, when a woman will go ahead and have no problem and she gets in the flesh and she rebukes a pastor, the man of God, like she does, there's a problem there. She obviously exalts herself on the same level. Huh? I'm, not gonna make, I'm nobody. But I've seen women do that, not just to me, to others. I remember I had a woman who uh, did that to me face to face. And she did it to me with her husband sitting there. And she started railing on me. And she goes, I know I'm in sin. And I said, well, then why did you stop? And I looked at her husband. I said, deal with her. She's your wife. Praise God she's not mine. <laughs> huh? I said, did you say that? Yeah, I said that. Praise the Lord. I'm glad, man. I'm glad I got a good wife. Amen. Huh? Amen. I do have a good wife. Amen. You ought to be all saying amen. amen. She, keeps me, she keeps me in line. <laughs> You think I'm joking? Hmm? She actually, she actually makes a lot of sense when we're talking. Second Thessalonians. Look over at this. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, chapter three, verse seven. Don't lose the page. Verse seven. It says this: For yourselves know how ye ought to follow. What? Oh, wow. Didn't say follow Paul. <coughs> Wonder who he's talking about. Huh? Leaders, how about that? For we behave not ourselves but disorderly among you. Guess what he's saying? Follow us. We're not disorderly. <coughs> we don't let the kids jump over the pews. Huh? They don't get to dis the back talk adults. They're not disrespectful to the elders. Huh? We're not disorderly. We're going to show you how to do it. See, they were being examples. By the way, that's what you're supposed to be, an example. Don't just preach it. Be an example, too. Don't just let it come off your lips. Why does it come off your life? Hmm? Live the life that you're preaching. Huh? Look at my. I tell my kids, I say, you're about, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Then they get up and they're like, you know, in the morning. And I get up and their face starts singing. I'll start, I'll start preaching. I'll grab them and say, oh, I need a hug. Huh? Faith, she comes, through the, she comes through the kitchen usually. She's bringing her dog to go outside. 
You know, she comes through the kitchen and she's like dragging her feet and her eyes are half closed. I don't know how she gets to the door because she can't see. She gets there and, I, and I'll do this. I'll say, oh, look at that beautiful woman walking across the floor. She's so gorgeous. Look at how gorgeous she is. She, guess what happens? She starts smiling. I'm not going to let him get up and be grumpy. Huh? No, we get happy about it. Be happy. We got another breath. Amen. Got another day of life. God's given us another 24 hours. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, in 24 hours, we get to the end of the day. Huh? We got to thank God. It's a blessing. Look at verse 9 in this same chapter. It says this. It says, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example. Look at Be an example unto you to follow us. See? Why would someone follow you if you're a horrible example? But let me put it this way. You're a horrible example. There's going to be someone following you. And we are talking about, uh, about this, about uh, psych, handshakes. I got a little boy who's five years old doing that now. <laughs> huh? uh, watch out for the little kids. They'll, they'll, they'll copy you like nobody's business. They'll become carbon copy. Huh? You think you think uh, you put yourself on a printer and just copy yourself off, huh? An exact copy of you because you did it. Look, at it, it's funny. The, the kids pick up the wrong things usually. That means that it's more important for you to emphasize doing the good things, so that they'll see that. Because they pick up, they'll see the wrong thing, and it seems like you can do ten right things and one wrong thing, and they got the wrong thing. They pick it up. So it's important that you be good examples. Hmm? Good examples. Paul saying, we're being examples to you. That's why you follow, and follow us in our good example. See, if he wasn't being a good example, he doesn't want you to follow him. I can guarantee that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. You thought I was keeping it in order, didn't you? Messing you all up. In 4.16 says this, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me, now he says. Say, why? Because he's being an example. He come to he come to this old church here in First Corinthians, and he's talking about these guys were doing wrong. The 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 son was sleeping with his father's wife in the church. Huh? It's one example, but he's saying, wait, 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 wait. Can you imagine him going to that son and saying, "Have you seen me do that? No. Have you heard about me doing that? No." Then what are you doing it for? I'm trying to be an example to you. See? If, look, if you're doing wrong, I'm going to guarantee you have kids. You do wrong, your kids are going to do wrong. If you're a if, if husband, if you're an adulterer, your children will become adulterers. You're a drunk, they'll be a drunk. You're a drug user, they'll be a drug user. You can guarantee it's going to happen. Do you smoke cigarettes? They'll smoke cigarettes. My mom smoked cigarettes. My dad smoked cigars, pipes, cigarettes. He smoked all of it. Guess what? Most of my family smokes, even today. And my nephews and nieces smoke. Huh? I smoked until I got saved. Huh? Why? Because we were following their example. That old commercial with the dad in the woods with his three-year-old son walking along hand in hand. They sit down at the foot of a tree. And the dad pulls out his pack of cigarettes out of his shirt. He pulls the cigarette out, puts it in his mouth, throws the pack on the ground, lights the cigarette. The son, who's three years old, picks up the pack and pulls the cigarette out for him, puts it in his mouth. And it's a caption says, like father, like son. Huh? Very powerful commercial. Uh, they don't do stuff like that nowadays. They want you to sin. <laughs> Thing is, if I father like son, that's true. Your kids will do what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, in the church, kids around you and younger people and younger Christians will do what you do if you're not careful. You better do right. Do right. As, as uh, Bob Jones used to say, do right till the stars fall. Hmm? When are the stars falling? Not till tribulation. <laughs> Guess what? You got to do right till the end of your time. A rapture comes, amen. And then you're not going to do wrong anyway, huh? You're just going to do right. Turn over to First Corinthians chapter eleven. 
Huh? In verse, first verse. Following Paul, following the disciples. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now that's the one they always want to go to. Be, see, I gotta follow I gotta follow Paul. But I said it says, even as also I am of Christ. So as long as he's following Christ, they don't get it. They they tell me, no, I don't have to. In fact, I heard this again this week. Jesus Christ was only to the Jews. I heard that. I said, are you kidding me? He died for all men's sins. Amen. He didn't just die for the Jews' sins. Amen. He died for the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. For God commanded his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It wasn't just to the Jews. Amen. But that's what they say. They manipulate the scriptures. And people believe it. No, Jesus Christ died for all men. Yeah, all. Jew and Gentile. Amen. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's what it says. Amen. I didn't write the book. These guys pervert the scripture. And I put that verse out there to them, and they'll say, oh, that's not what it means. You misinterpret it. That's, like, that's their, always their go-to. It's like they got it in file. Oh, let me see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you misinterpreted <laughs> <laughs> like that's, no, that's exactly what it means he died for all men any man could get saved trust in Jesus Christ Amen. Paul's not how do you get saved and trust Jesus Christ if you're following Paul and that's all you follow and you don't follow Christ and Christ's not for you well how do you get saved well there you go it's going to push right into works right. Right. how works salvation if I don't follow Paul I can't be saved Paul is next to Mary crying and weeping his eyes out over this whole thing. Huh? Roman Catholics build a whole relationship and the, with people on the Mary, worship of Mary. And now they got the worship of Paul. I don't get it. Look at I got saved. I got born again. Look at it. If, if, you're not, if you believe that, you must not be born again. I'm just telling you. You can't be born again. I learned that a long time ago too. If you believe you can follow man instead of uh, Christ, and and you and you don't Christ isn't for you, you're not saved. I'm just telling you, you're not saved. You're lost as a goose. You're like a white bear in a snowstorm. Can't find your way home. Amen. Chapter three of Philippians, verse seventeen says this: Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. You see, follow me and mark those, huh? Why, why? It says right here, walk so as ye have us for an example. Well, it sounds like more than Paul they're supposed to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, you say, why are you bringing this up? Because this needs to be said, man. It's, I mean, it's, it's permeating churches. Amen. I'm amazed at how many people believe this. I only believe the books that Paul wrote. I don't have to listen to anything else. And see, they don't count Hebrews as Paul's book, so they can twist the scriptures. One guy told me, he said, that's a, that's a work salvation book. That's what he said. He said, that's for the tribulation. It's a transitional book. And I said, then what do you do with last days in that? The only thing I asked them, they didn't have an answer. So chapter 1 says, in the last days, when did the last day? When's the last days? Everybody says now we're in the last days. So why is that a transitional book and for the tribulation? If we're in the last days. It sounds like that book would be for today. It is. Amen. Amen. And then they tell me that they, they preached it to the lost Jews. That's what they said. I said, that's not what he's talking about. You read it. It says brethren. Yep. Right. He's not calling lost Jews brethren. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just helping you out a little bit. We follow Paul. We follow other disciples. Look at You want to know why they want to follow Paul and they say it's only Paul? And they don't. I actually brought this up to him about saying, you follow us. Because, see, Peter and James and John and all the other apostles aren't for us. All their books are tri tribulation or transitional books. They don't belong to us. We don't learn anything from them. They're not doctrinally sound for us. They're of the Jews. And that's what they'll say. That's why they want to just follow Paul and they ignore what I just said about following us. 
because that means you better get in first and second Peter. It means you better get in first, second, third John and get in the book of Revelation and read the Gospels, amen, because you're going to find out that there's things in there you need to follow. <laughs> yeah, Sermon on the Mount's a good one. <laughs> hmm? Amen. How do you miss John 3.16? Hmm. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 says this, those things which you have both learned and received and heard, I like that, and seen in me, do. That means they've had to see him do something for God. And he says, the God of peace shall be with you. Look at that. I've had someone say, I, I, he actually said, this guy said to me, he said, he says, I don't believe in churches anymore and preachers. He says, I'm just going to stay in the book and I'm just going to ask questions. And he says, I'm not going to listen to men. I'm not going <laughs> to, the guy's a nut. He's not going to listen to men. But my Bible just said, following this, these disciples, following Paul, following these people you're learning from, them, you're receiving and heard and seen in me, he says, do. Now, what does he say, the results of that? The God of peace shall be with you. So there, when you're saying, I'm not listening to any more preachers. I'm sick of preachers. I'm tired of church. I'm not going to church. I'll just worship on my own. Guess what you're saying? I don't want the peace of God with me. <laughs> and then they come to me and say, how come I don't have any peace? Because you quit listening to God. God speaks through men. Oh, he'll speak through his word. He'll speak to you in prayer, but he'll speak through you, to, to you through prayer, preaching and teaching. And he'll speak to you as you just converse with someone about scriptures. And you just want to shut all that off. That might be the problem. That they don't want to hear from God, but they're using it as an excuse. Too much conviction. I was telling a lady today, I said, you know what your problem is? Problem is you want a marshmallow preacher, someone who won't preach hard and preach it straight to you so you won't get under conviction. Let yourself get under conviction. Leave God alone. Let him do his work. First Thessalonians. That's what you're doing. You're interfering with God. Chapter 1. God died for the church. He ordained the church. He established the church. He's building upon the rock, the church. Why we reject the church then? Well, the building isn't the church. No, the, the church is a called out body of believers. It's a body of Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. They reject it. I'm the church all by myself. No, you're not. You know what you are? You're a rebel. That's what you are. You're a disease. That's what you are. You shouldn't say those things, preacher. I just did. Amen. It's too bad. It's too late. I did. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians again, chapter 1. We're getting down to the end here. Verse 6, it says, And ye became followers of us, look at that word, us again, and of the Lord. Whoa, wait a minute. What did I just read? And of the Lord. I wonder who that is. Huh? Bible says, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It says what? Lord. I always go over to that verse and show people that Jesus is the Lord. Because they say, well, who's the Lord? Well, there it is right there. I've actually had that asked me. And I said, the Bible says Jesus Christ is. So he says, not only that, but you're following the Lord. You're not just following us, but you're also following the Lord. Look at, he's not just, is he talking to, who's he talking to here? Believers, the church. He's talking to Gentiles. Hmm. I guess Jesus isn't just to the Jews then. They are so goofy. They are goofy. And you become, you say you shouldn't say that. I said it again. Amen. <laughs> I like to say other things, but I can't say them in the pulpit. <laughs> Not really. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm seriously. I, I said, when I got on the phone to Rodney Martin the other day, 
and he just went off. He's, he feels like I do about what's going on with all these people and this doctrine coming out that's so false. He says, I am so sick and tired of it. I never heard Rodney in all the years I've known Rodney, 35 years, is it 35, 36 years? I've known him. I've never heard him speak like this, ever. I mean, he was livid. He was mad. He was so sick and tired of these fake Christians spreading this fake gospel. And he says, man, I'm just so tired. I don't even say anything that sounds like it, he says to me. <laughs> I said, I'm shutting up. <laughs> you mad. <laughs> but he was letting it have it. He, he had to vent on, on somebody, so he vented on me. I just uh, tried. And I couldn't get two words in edgeway. Now, with Rodney, you can get two words in edgeway. He's real quiet, usually. I couldn't get any two words in. I mean, he was just going on. I talked to him for about an hour and a half, and I was, it was Rodney just going off. <laughs> it's like, i got to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> I said, amen, brother. I feel, I feel your pain. I, feel, I know how you feel. It's a false doctrine. People just can't get it right. That's why I believe it's because they're lost. I believe it's because their mind's blinded by the God of this world. I believe it's because they don't have the spirit of God in them. Because the spirit of God was in them, it would convict them. Look at it. I'm a man. I know, I know, beyond popular belief, but uh, I'm a man. <laughs> and uh, I would never do to preachers what I see being done to preachers today. There was a lady on our site, one of the preachers, he's the one who has defended me in the past and stands up against these people for me. And I don't, I didn't tell him to do it, he just did it. And he contacted me personally. But, uh, he stands up, and some lady gets on there and says, well, I was under his ministry, and I thank you for his ministry and stuff, but I don't agree with his doctrine. I mean, she's just going off. I'm like, are you kidding? Why don't you just shut up at the at, end it when you said, I was under his ministry, and I learned a lot. How about end it right there? But no, had to put her two cents in and started railing on him. I'm like, are you kidding me? Keep your mouth shut. I wouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah, I would do that to preachers. I don't want to hurt his church. What if his church members get on there and see it? Now they're going to research to see why he's wrong. Huh? Look, all preachers are, they're not all right. None of the preachers are right. I'm going to tell you that. Every one of them makes mistakes. Huh? But what you do is you still got to be faithful. You got to believe that God put this guy in your life to, to preach the gospel to you, to get the truth across to you, so you can learn. Look, you don't go out and rail on him because you disagreed with something about him. And one, one thing he taught. Huh? Look at that. I could tell you there's things that I didn't agree with my preacher on, but you know I love my preacher. Amen. I did, and still do. Amen. He's not preaching anymore, but I love him still. Right. Huh? He, I, I, hey, when he left the the pulpit, left the ministry, I hugged him and told him I said I appreciate you because you see I probably wouldn't have got saved if your family didn't come or your church didn't come knocking on the door Amen. and talking to my wife about Jesus Christ. Huh? He goes, oh, no, you probably could have got saved. Someone would probably come by. I said, no. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. And so I just told him, man, I appreciate what you've done. And I left it at that. Yeah. Left it at that. Hmm? Look at what it says in verse 7 of this verse. Well, let's finish verse 6. It says, having received the word in much affliction, well, verse, I mean, of uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, and 7. And ye become followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. See, the affliction, bringing you still had joy because the Holy Ghost, amen? Not because it's you. If you're in the flesh, you're not going to have any joy, but if you're in the spirit, you will. So that you were examples unto all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. Want to know why God allowed you to go through tribulation? So you can be examples of how to handle it. They rejoice it. That's like that guy who, when I, when I, my truck broke down in his driveway, and he got mad and started, remember I told you he started kicking my truck around? <laughs> and he's wondering why I was so happy about it. I said, man, what's it going to do? Kicking the wheels? Is it going to make it change? I mean, all of a sudden the alternator is going to jump up onto the, up in his place that it belongs, and it's going to drill out the bolt and put a new bolt in all by itself, and all of a sudden, yeah. No, I said, just call him a mechanic. That's all I can do. Huh? I said, man, it, it, look at circumstances. My preacher used to always say, don't let circumstances change your joy. Huh? Don't let it change your joy. Your joy should always be there no matter what the circumstances. Devil wants to steal your joy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
He wants to steal that joy from you. And he'll do all he can to steal it. He'll make your life miserable to steal it. Huh? And you know what you do? You laugh at him. Ha! <laughs> so you ain't, gonna, you ain't stealing it. So how can you steal? When my wife and I were being audited, the first time we were audited by the IRS, and we've been audited several times, but we, the first time we were being audited, we sat in the auditor's office. And we, 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 at first we were nervous. And then I said to my wife, I said, you know, they can't take our salvation away or our birthday. Can't take either one of those away. So that lightened it up. And we started rejoicing. And then we started picking at people in the auditor's office. They had all those different auditors there. And we were talking, that lady looks like a chicken, and that guy looks like a weasel, and that guy looks like a wolf. And I mean, and they, they had the appearances of an animal. And so we said, which one do you think we're going to get? So we, uh, we were trying to guess, and we got weasel. <laughs> and so we were laughing. Huh? And then we got preaching. And he didn't want to hear that. He wanted to drop everything. Oh, let's not hear the God, about God. That's what he said. <laughs> huh? No, he just took control. And we laughed and we rejoiced. In fact, they wondered why we were so happy about all this. In fact, when, we got, when they tried to take our kids away in Indiana, the guy was wondering how we could be so happy. All this is going on and we're happy still. Huh? Because we're supposed to be examples. Look at it. We've got to show them that it's rejoice. It's, it's worth being saved. Yes. That nothing can affect you. Well, look at When I die and go to, go to heaven, look at Everything here is going to be left behind. And I'm going to go to heaven, and I'm going to be in a place that rejoicing is never going to end. And guess what? I'm not even going to put a second thought about this place. Hmm. 1 Timothy 4.12 says this, Let no man despise thy youth. Talking about young people. But be thou an example of the believers. Young people, you can be an example of the believers. In word, in conversation... Do you know what that means? In word, that means your spoken word. In conversation, the way you live. In charity, that's your giving, love. In spirit, in faith, in purity. How about that, young people? God requires this of you. He expects this of you. Oh, I'll, I'll, when, when I get an adult, then I'll start doing these things. No, he wants you to do it now. Now. Now, be an example. Show other young people how it can be done. Amen. Hmm? Yes. If I was in public school, I was telling uh, Marshallino, I said, if I was in public school, I'd be carrying my Bible around. I walk past, I walk past the principal and show him I got it. Amen. Go do what you want to try and do. <laughs> uh, I'll be tempting him. <laughs> hmm? You say you shouldn't do that. Well, I would, because that's the way I was. <laughs> I've been showing them my Bible. Look at I got my King James Bible. And I'm going to prayer right now. Huh? I may even go into, his, uh, go into the door of his office and start praying. God, take care of the principal. Lord, what a blessing it would be if he was saved. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about starting a fire. But I'm going to tell you, that's, uh, that's what I would do. I wish I had been saved when I was a, when I was a teenager. It will be an example to other teenagers. Show them that it can be done. You don't have to be a loser. You don't have to have a generation gap. You don't have to be uh, a rebellious. That's yeah, like teenagers are, are required to have that generation gap. Don't talk to adults and be rebellious. <laughs> huh? No, I think they should talk to adults. In fact, adults should be their friends. Yeah, huh? And I think that they should not be rebellious. I think they should be obedient. But see, they've been taught different by this old world, by the system. Huh? Rebel. Look at what's going on in our country right now. All the rebellion going on. If you don't do it my way, I'm going to rebel. I'm going to cry like a big baby. I'm going to stomp my feet. And I'm going to throw things at windows and break them. And I'm going to kill people. And I'm going to burn places down. That's all rebellion. Hmm? What a wicked generation we are in. And see, someone's going to be an example and show the younger people it can be done. It can be done. Turn over to Titus, chapter 2. I just got a few verses left. About five verses, four verses. 
chapter 2, verse 6. It says this, young men, likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Ooh, that's a good example. Don't be drunks. Don't be drinkers. You can't, you can't take a drink, I've told you. You can't take a drink without it affecting your mind. And all things show in thyself a pattern of good works. You see that? That means, do you know what that means? That means you've got to be, you've got to have habitual uh, doings in your life. Your works have to be habitual. That means you've got to have a habit of this. Huh? You, you get, this has got to be habit forming for you. Huh? In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. That means good works should be, you should be addicted to good works. Amen. Bible says be addicted to the ministry. Yeah. Hmm? In doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity and sincerity. Have good doctrine. Be doctrinally sound. This is the example you're supposed to be. Sound speech. Hmm. Get rid of your language from the world. Amen. That cannot be condemned. That means no words coming out of your mouth that can be condemned. Cussing words, get rid of them. Huh? Gossiping, critical, those words are gone. Why don't you love people with your words? Why don't you help people with your words? And preach. And sometimes it's not going to feel so good. They may not like what you're saying. But you don't stop. Be an example. That he is, says, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of a contrary part may be ashamed. That means someone is contrary to the truth, to righteousness, to goodness. They feel ashamed. You know what's happening in our country? We're ashamed for being a Christian. They're shaming us. Right. Uh, we should be shaming them. That's what it just said. Yep. Huh? They should be ashamed that they don't have Jesus. They should be ashamed they're not doing right. You know what they do? They're lifting up sin hey, and perversion and immorality as if this is a good thing. They should feel bad about it. They should feel wicked in their hearts yeah, yeah. because they're doing wicked things. And go, how do you do that? Be an example. Amen. Speak the word, though. Amen. Huh? They'll feel ashamed. Having no evil thing to say of you. Yeah. They're not. I remember when I got saved, and I was working for Ken Strand, who died and went to hell. And it's too bad, but I remember after I got saved, he went around and told everybody, he says, I don't know what Mike got, but, man, I'm glad he got it. Huh? And I, I got saved. He says, I'm making money. I mean, I'm making more money now. That means Brother Mike wasn't doing the right job before he got saved. He wasn't doing good. And I was foreman. <laughs> hmm? He wasn't doing good. But after I got saved, man, everything changed. I'm talking about we had, we had church service, so to say. Amen. We're going to do right from now on. Morally right. That's what I told them, the guys. Doing morally right, rock and roll's gone, you're, you're smoking, you're drugs, you're drinking, all that's gone. No more. Huh? And boy, they didn't like it. But I knew it was going to be contentious, but I didn't, I didn't let that get in my way. You know what? Some of the guys wanted to help me after a while. Some of the guys didn't like it. In fact, Ron, Rod Larson came to me, one of the biggest contenders against me, came to me like in the night like Nicodemus and said, why are things different? Hmm? He waited for the right moment to get me alone. Every one of them started doing that. Get me alone, ask me what, what happened. Because they knew what I was before. They, I fellowshiped with them in that way. Hmm? Look over in 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll finish with this. But see, when I were saved, we're supposed to be a good example. Look at, and you know what? You know what was really good about getting saved, working for the same company, and then still continue to work for that same company? They got to see night and day. Light and dark. See? And they knew something had happened. Hmm? Amen. The sad thing about it is some of them died and went to hell. And it's too bad. Because that's not what I wanted for them. I'm I'm serious. I, I, I was so broken when my boss died. I knew he went to hell. Because he told me, I'm not accepting Jesus Christ. I'm not giving my heart to him. 
And just a few months later, he was dead. Hmm? I was broken. My wife took him and told me that he died. And I was like, what? I told her, I called her a liar. Didn't I call you a liar? I did. I said, you're lying to me. He can't be dead. Because I want, my whole thinking was, I wanted to get another chance to witness to him. Huh? I wanted him to get saved. Hmm? First Peter chapter 5, verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. See, you don't be lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. That is the pastor's duty. He doesn't lord over the people. He be the example. You want to know how you make a good a good leader? Be an example. Hmm? You say, I want to be a good leader. Who can I boss around? <laughs> Sorry, you got the wrong idea what a leadership is. I like what I think it was Leonard Ravenhill who said, Why do we have leadership conferences? We need to how to die for Christ conferences. Wasn't that Leonard Ravenhill said that? Does anybody remember? I think it was him who said it. Hmm? We need to have how to die for Christ conferences. But everybody wants to have leadership conferences. I just gave you a leadership conference right there. Be an example. <laughs> Don't lord over the heritage. You're not the boss. By the way, in the leadership conferences, they teach you contrary to that. I'm the pastor. You do what I tell you. And you'll jump off a cliff if I tell you to do it. That's lording over the, the flock. You know, you're not going to tell you're not going to tell the flock to do something that God wouldn't tell them to do. You know what you do? You be an example. Wasn't Christ our example? He was. He was an example. Huh? He had all the right in the world to lord over the flock, and he didn't. He doesn't do it now. Amen. You know what? He's very, very gracious to us. Very merciful. Huh? We need to learn learn from that. And so let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Help us understand what we heard. Help us to be examples as we should be. Examples to the flock. Examples to one another. Teaching people how to live for Christ. Speak like Christ would speak. Think like he thinks. Lord, encourage folks for Jesus. It's funny how people don't want to hear. So many people who profess Jesus Christ looking for loopholes in the scriptures. There isn't any. Kind of wonder if they're saved. Why would you want to look for a loophole? I don't want to look for a loophole. I want to just do what it says. <laughs> I just want to follow his word. I don't want to change his word. And if I want to follow his word, then I can be a good example for others to follow. And we've got people follow us all the time. Lord, help us, each and every one.